Okay, welcome to PTV Vistro. This is the opening screen where we find, and we first are gonna drive our map until we get to the location of our project. And if you hold down the center button on your mouse, you can pan, and then you can use the wheel to zoom in and out. So we can zoom in on Valparaiso, and we're gonna go to University at Lincoln Way, which is right here. Make that centered in our screen. First thing we're going to do is drop in an intersection. So up here in the upper left corner is our signalized intersection. You can choose other types of intersections there if you just want to do an all-way stop or a two-way stop or a roundabout. We're going to go with the intersection, our signalized one, and we just have to drop that in and build the intersection for us. We're going to want to stretch out the legs on this just so that, there we go, um, we have enough room for our turn bays and so our left turn movements. So I'm gonna just stretch these back, uh, just to, you know, just generally uh, a decent ways back. That looks good enough to me on that. So now we're gonna select this intersection and you click in the middle of it, now it's selected. Now we're gonna be active over here on our intersection setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna in, input uh, the name of it so we can, Click in here, Lincoln Way at University. There we go. Control type. We can pick what kind of a control we've got. We're going to go signalized. Okay. Changes what some of your default values are and what you can use through that. Now we're going to do, you can name these approaches as well. Um, so you could, oops, no. We'll do that later. <laughs> name those in there, um, or show name on it. And this is our lane configuration. And so we know on our, our northbound, for instance, we can change this configuration. We have a left turn lane. And actually, it's an all-way one, so we'll just keep that the same. Our uh, westbound, we have a dedicated left turn lane, right? So that's our left with a through right. Okay. Eastbound, the same thing. We have a dedicated left turn lane, so a left with a through right, and that's okay. Southbound, northbound, it's a left through right for each direction. At least I think it is. Let's assume it is uh, for now. So now we can plug in what our volumes are for each movement. And so if you're going northbound, how many left through and right vehicles do you have? And that'll be our next question, All right? And if we come up here to this was um, I can drag this over here. This was our turn movements we had and Byron counted these for us and we're going to plug in now these numbers for our left through and right and there's a very few trucks so just to make it easy for the demo I'm just going to only include cars and then we can put peds in later but for right now we're going to look at left through right for the northbound and so Reading off of that chart, which I've moved over to the side now, I'm going to have eight vehicles northbound, two through, and there were 23 turning right. Southbound, I had two left, three through, two right. And eastbound, I had two left, 140 through, and one right. Westbound, 23 turn left, 114 turned right and up through and three turned right. So that'd be our numbers uh, for that. These should be your volume per hour is what you want. In fact, I just entered one line, so that's wrong. You want to do your total uh, for each of those movements. And so it's for the entire hour is what you'd like to enter for that. So you have to add those up. We're going to use these just to get started for this demo on a purpose. Just assume that our lanes are 12 feet wide. If it's a little bit less, as you know from our level of service calculations, then you're gonna, um, it's gonna reduce capacity slightly. We'll leave, leave those at 12, unless we know otherwise. Through there, the pocket is the left turn bay or the left turn lane. So right now it shows you've got a left turn coming all the way up to your intersection. But if you've got a pocket, and we don't have any on the northbound, but on the east and westbound we do. So we have a lane in each pocket. And we add those lanes in, and now you can see we've got this little turn bay over here. 
That's, that's, they call it a pocket. It's not a term I'm familiar with, but you can change how long that is. And so if we, this is a 200 foot long turn bay, you can see how that changed. Now it's longer there. So I don't know what it is. Let's go 200. Looks good. It's probably a little bit less. It's probably like 150, somewhere in there. If you have a median, you can click that and turn those on. What's our speed limit out there? Uh, north and south is probably 30, east and west it's probably more like 35 through there. Even if it's posted at 30, I'm guessing people are generally going more like 35 miles per hour. If you know what the grade is on your road, you can plug that in here. Again, that changes your capacity. Here's some width, if you know what the width of your cross uh, crosswalk is. If you don't have a crosswalk, you can unclick this down here and that turns it off, crosswalk width. You don't have to get too exact on those numbers. It should come in automatically. If you've got a right turn channelization, you can turn that on down here. So over here, we've got this eastbound. If I turn on channelization, you can see it added this whole little turning road um, through that, right? So the roundabouts, we have those, not many other places do we have that. And then this is a checkbox whether you're allowed to turn on red. And so this is up here where intersection set up. That's our base of our intersection. So we've got that set up good through that. Here's our traffic volumes. Now we can see um, a little more detail about each of the traffic volumes through there. Here's our peak hour adjustment factor. We can calculate what that is and we can change that. It's going to stay at uh, 1 to start with. I'm going to put in 0 0.92 because that's more of a default value. All right. And if I push down on my left mouse and drag it across, I can change all of these at one time. Isn't that slick? I'll do it again here. Left click hold down and scroll or pull to the side 0 0.92 so I can change all of my um, peak hour factors and you can add another adjustment factor if you want uh, here's a 15 minute um, it's very low again I should have used the larger numbers uh, for the turn movements on there you can add if there's on street parking because that affects traffic flow so north and south um, there is actually on street parking on both sides of the road left and right through there so we'll turn that on and on street parking maneuver rate i don't know how many per hour um let's say northbound let's say there's five cars an hour on each side and we'll just do that around it. that's a total guess on that bus stops and now we don't have any on that okay so we've got that set up now we've got our basic traffic information here if you want to do a projection for the future you change that here by adding in this growth rate we're going to do a baseline that's just today, so we're going to leave this as 1, uh, 1.0. Now, now we're going to move over to the signal control, and we set it up, and it's going to give us so the analysis period 15 minutes. It's thinking north and south is the major road, east and west is the minor road. It's incorrect. We want to switch this over to major and major here, because the way it uh, retimes things for you is dependent on whether it's a major or a minor uh, section of the road. Is it located in the central business district? Yeah, it's close. It's kind of like that. This is going to do a fixed time actuation type. Is it a fixed time controller or is it actuated? Well, it's actually a semi-actuated one. We have detection on all but the through lanes for Lincoln Way. So that's semi-actuated. Do we know what the offset is? Nope. I don't know. So we're going to leave that zero. But some of this stuff is going to be calculated later. Uh, automatically by the controller. So if you know what it is, you can type it in. We don't know, so we're going to leave it blank uh, for now. All right. So um, now we've got what kind of lanes do we have uh, through here? And so we're going to, these are lined up, so it says we're permissive, that means permissive, that lines up with northbound left through and right. They're all permissive, which means you have the green ball indicator on your signal head. So we're going to do the eastbound left. Eastbound left is actually protected permissive. So that's P-R-O-T-P-E-R-M, protected permissive. So we're going to turn that on, and so is the westbound left. It's protected permissive. So it gives you the arrow, and then after the arrow is done, it gives you a green ball indicator, and off you go. Right. And now that gives you the option of putting the, in a value for this. Signal group is what phase number your signal is, and that's... Um, other programs do that automatically, this one not so. So how do we find out what our phase is, is we have to come over here and look at this. And so here's our uh, phase diagram that we had from that in signal indication. Two is eastbound, six is westbound, four is northbound, eight is southbound. 
and uh, we talked we'll talk in class about which ones to assume so you have to assign phase numbers here on this so we're going to start with our major phase major phase eastbound from that diagram is phase two major phase uh, left turn from that diagram is five major phase westbound is going to be phase six and the left bound for westbound is phase one okay and it's already whoops uh, i don't know what i clicked there all right get out of here all right here back to normal so now we've got those plugged in now we got to give these our phase numbers and southbound is phase eight yep. and northbound is phase four according to that timing plan down here is timing information so what's our minimum green what's our maximum greens out there and we probably don't know at this point so we put that in there i'm going to say that this is probably only a 15 second turn bay and that'd be our maximum and on the maximum for the through phase it's pretty long so let's say it's 45 that's a pretty standard number through there how much time on the yellow light they call it amber three seconds all red one second split we're going to let it calculate that for us vehicle extension just leave that alone and what's your walk time walk time is almost always um seven seconds is your minimum you can be five but seven is more of a standard walk and we measured that the other day out there at this intersection so we could plug that in we can just kind of leave that as a default value and not get too excited about i'm changing those for now all right okay is it coordinated um this one is actually so here's our startup loss time our clearance loss time you guys know how to calculate those now we learned that in class how to do that and do we have detectors and are there detector locations yep we have detectors on the protected on this left turn base and on the side roads and our detector location is from zero starts at zero which is the stop bar and how far back does it go most uh, most detectors in indiana are 56 feet back it's a standard loop emplacement and so we'll do 56 on that and the same with protected permissive there's actually video detection here on um, well, i guess it's not not some other words and it's however big they draw those boxes so we've set up our detectors now and we don't have detectors on the through phases so we don't check that box any upstream filtering no leave that alone um, for that exclusive pedestrian phase that'd be that scramble phase we don't have one of those so we're leaving that alone here's our lane groups now the final thing we need to do to get this to work and you can change these factors too if you want is we have to assign let's see there's tons of things you can change here we have to assign now um, what's our sequence of our um, our sequence on our controller and we're going to use a standard it should be three but there is no phase three so it's four so it should be one two three four so an eight phase controller and then this is five six and there's no seven and then eight right so that's our normal this is the um a barrier and that barrier usually goes between um two and three and six and seven so we're going to click there so there's our barrier on some of the other intersections where you have a uh, like up at Roosevelt that's more important because you've got a one-way south left turn only and the northbound doesn't have a left so this barrier makes a big difference for it so now it's plugged in what all of our uh, phases are so it's going to go phase one and five which are the two uh, left turns on Lincoln Way first and then Lincoln Way through movements are going to have a bunch of time and then our side road has time and there's no turn movements there so it's just four and eight and there's no three and seven in use in this and this is probably a really bad signal timing right now okay right. here's our levels of service e d d and d and the total for the intersections of d well we haven't even optimized this yet it's giving you the, the bare minimum times so we're going to come back up um, to the top here and we are going to set up um, optimizing the split so we're going to do vc balancing and we're going to between boundaries let's set our step size to be five so we're doing five second increments 60 seconds is the small cycle length we're going to have and 150 will be our maximum cycle length and then click okay and it's going to take a second and now it's calculated it 
And you can see now we've got uh, real times in here. And it's suggesting that we're going to use 9 seconds on the left turns, 30 second splits on the through movements, 21 seconds on the side street uh, through there. And so that's now your suggested timing. And we can scroll down and see what kind of levels of service that gave us. And do, 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 get down here. Okay, it's much better. Uh, each of the levels of service on the approaches is level service C. So it's not a, not a very excellent uh, approach, but we're getting level service C on this. And um, so that's for our total movements through that. Here's other modes. This is for your um, crosswalks. The pedestrians have a level service of A and B. This is your intersection total level service, though. And this is our, our volume to capacity ratio. So uh, it's not great. All right, we could do a lot better. And up here, you can see which ones are doing the worst and which ones are doing better on each of the movements uh, through there. Right. Up here is, here's how long our queues are. This is how much, how far back cars are backing up. That's not bad. Um, this is our worst one here, 103 seconds back on whichever movement that is. That was uh, eastbound right. Is our that'd be kind of eastbound movement through there. That has one of the longer queues on that. And it set our signal, our cycle length at 60. So it's liking the lower cycle length. We can set that ourselves. We can make that 90. Now it's retimed down here for us. And we can change, we can optimize our splits again. And we can go through there and it retimes the splits. Now we have a 90 second cycle length, which probably means it's going to help. Lincoln Way and Hurt University. So let's come look at it. Um, here's our delay. Hmm, straight off uh, level service D all the way across. Oh, here we go. This is the better one. This is movement approach intersection results. Here's our lane group results. Do that. So it has a group. That's what it is. And our level service for the intersection is a D. Right, so we didn't improve it. The 90 actually hurt us through there. Okay. So that's the quick setup. Um, then from here, we can play with it. Now we've got a base scenario. If we want to try changing something, we can come over here and we can add a new scenario. And it takes it a second. And there's scenario one. And we're going to right click and rename that. And we're going to do Alt 1 AM Peak. We'll call it. So we have a new alternative. And there we go. Go back to base and we can switch up here now. Now we can go back to alternative. And the alternative now it looks blank like we lost something. You just had to click which intersection you want to be in. So there, that's the intersection I'm in. And now if you want to come back into your lane setup, and now we could add in. So if we get this eastbound, so we've got a really heavy movement somewhere. We're gonna add in a special right turn lane for our scenario. Okay. And we're going to tell it that we have a lane in the bay there. So now we've got this little D-cell lane turning in. And if we go back to signal control, we can also tell it that if we, oh, here we go. Well, the permissive, da, 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 where did I lost my, um, so there's our bay, there's our pocket length and channelize that's what i was looking for so we are going to channelize that and so now we've got channelized right turn Ooh, that's gonna cars are gonna slide right around that corner we're not going to have any trouble there and now we can come back to our signal piece and we can check out in this scenario am peak um did that improve anything um, not really <laughs> we still got d's through here uh, there wasn't wasn't that many people turning right okay so we tested it and now we can actually redo our split on there, VC balancing, okay. Um, or if we wanted to try it by minimize critical movement delay. So now we're going to prioritize Lincoln Way and probably steal time away from the university. Let's see if that changed things. Not a lot. We're still levels of service D on that. So it didn't help a lot. So that scenario probably didn't help. If you want to go back and see what the original was, you just click back up here. And you'll see this pops back to our base scenario. And it again forgets what intersection you're looking at. Don't ask me why. We click there and we can see it again. And then we're back to that original base. So it's a very easy way to do scenarios and look at multiple options. Okay, well, that should get you started. Uh, be sure to ask questions if any come up. Thanks.